So hi, um, we're here at Eurosatory in Paris, and I'm here on the Alcon stand with Ollie Jackson, uh, who's the chief engineer for control brakes at Alcon, but also a uh, reasonably well-known and reasonably successful British touring car racing driver. Um, it's great to have you here, Ollie. Um, Ollie, in front of us, we've got these um, brake-by-wire examples, and we've issued a press release this week that talks about um, launching this technology into the defence sector. First of all, could you just tell me a little bit about the technology and what it delivers. Yeah, so we um, about um, seven or eight years ago, we decided to to get into the um, the active actuation, as we called it, bias blending. Back there, uh, with the advent of a lot of our customers, motorsport customers, going into electric vehicle technology, and uh, so our first product was was this one, which um, which we developed um, in partnership with Mahindra Formula E team, um, which ran on their season five car uh, with a with a reasonable amount of success as well. Had a, a win or two and a couple of pole positions, fastest laps. Um, we uh, we learned a lot about the the technology in that we've we've maintained the the, the original concept that we uh, that we utilise for that, which is based around a high pressure pump and servo valve type arrangement and a, as a self contained unit, and we basically have run with that and, and developed that over the last um, seven or eight years, whatever it is now. But uh, yeah. So my understanding of brake by wire is effectively you remove the the linkage between the the pedal, the operator, and the braking system itself, which gives a number of different advantages in the motorsport sector clearly that's really successful and that's working for you how do you see that technology and that that system change um, being applicable to the defense sector well first of all it's worth talking about what the benefit is in, in a motorsport vehicle and in, in essence in a motorsport vehicle as you say you know, you're decoupling the, the driver from uh, from the, the braking system and what that means is that you can you can balance the braking with any regenerative braking that's uh, that's going on from the the actual powertrain so in the instance of, um, of these systems, uh, actually for the Formula E car, the Season 5 Formula E car, for a significant amount of the of the race of, of the Season 5 car, actually the friction brakes would hardly be used at all. Uh, and then actually if the battery's full, the battery's overheated, then that means that the level of friction braking has to increase. And what it means is that you can you can vary the friction braking independently of, um, of the, you know, what the driver's input is. So, so on, on these systems, the way they work is they have um, uh, they use the driver as a backup. Uh, so it, actually, if the system is inactive, the, the the braking system is just like a normal braking system. So when, when the uh, the system is charged up and, and working, then um, then the if the vehicle sends it the signal to work, then it completely disconnects the driver from the the rear friction circuit and uh, the rear hydraulic circuit, and um, and then it basically gives the the vehicle the freedom to do whatever it wants with the brakes. So two things from a defence perspective. Yeah. Um, first of all. What kind of applications in defence? Where do you see this technology being applied? And then the second question behind that is um, uh, straight away: uh, uh, How would you address it being robust enough for the slightly different applications that you'd see in defence to the motorsport world? Yeah. So the, I mean, like I say, with, with motorsport, a lot of it is about energy harvesting. And it's about increasing the, the vehicle's range for the amount of battery capacity there is. There are huge advantages to doing that. And in fact, on a front axle of a vehicle, you can you can achieve you know 30, 40. 50% increases depending on the usage cycle. So, I mean, that's the benefit of itself. It means that you can have a smaller battery, you can have a, a smaller engine uh, to, to charge the battery if you're using a series hybrid type application. Uh, for uh, In terms of the other benefit as well is, although these systems work using the driver as the failsafe, actually, we've done a lot of autonomous vehicle technology in the meantime since we developed these systems where the driver is completely removed from the equation. So that, that gives you opportunities for autonomy, that gives you opportunities Opportunities to put the driver where you wouldn't normally be able to put the driver because of practical concerns and when it's combined by a steer by, with a steer by wire system for example it's, uh, and it, it gives you the ability to remote control without any any additional infrastructure to be installed in the vehicle that has to could potentially conflict with the driver's space and um, so yeah that, that freedom to, to operate works and, and what we're offering basically is brake by wire as a service for this so that we can design the system the level of redundancy to the application so if it's a robotic vehicle it's never going to have
have a have a passenger in it, then it can be very minimal levels of redundancy. Um, if it's going to have 12 or 15 guys in it and it needs to be as safe as a road vehicle, then we can offer even fail operational capability where the system can partially fail and the vehicle can still carry on with its mission. So, and that that's a, a, a big part of the um, of the benefit of you know, of what we can offer in terms, particularly the redundancy, but also the systems are very robust. They're most sport proven. You know, the, a lot of the components are also used in military applications as well. That's great. Thanks, Ollie. Yeah.